Hey guys, and welcome to another video in a spin-off series where I'll be exploring the Final Fantasy VII compilation lore and easter eggs that appear in episode intermission. I'm MJ Gallagher, author of books such as Norse Myths that inspired Final Fantasy VII and The Nibelheim Incident, an award-winning project produced in association with Kupukon. Like my main series, breaking down the chapters of Final Fantasy VII Remake, all of which can be found on Kupocon's YouTube channel, the purpose of these videos is to highlight a lot of the detail hidden within Intermission, and to provide a broader understanding for new and veteran fans alike. In this episode, I'll be examining the Fort Condor minigame in Chapter 1 of the DLC, it's self-titled Wutai's Finest. Despite previously advising that I would also be discussing the Happy Turtle side quest here, I've opted to save this subject for a separate breakdown. Just as a forewarning, the video will be spoiler heavy for this part of Intermission, Remake in general, and the wider compilation of Final Fantasy VII. And if you're new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. I touched on this briefly last time around, but before the player can leave Avalanche HQ's hideout, Yuffie must receive a crash course in Fort Condor, the new strategy board game that has taken Midgar by storm. Polk tells Yuffie the game hasn't been out long, with some NPCs outside supplementing this by noting it was initially released on the plate, then quickly made its way to the slums. Before I move on to discuss the game itself, it would probably be best to provide a bit of context. Fort Condor is a location in the world of Final Fantasy VII, far to the south of Midgar. There's a regional Mako reactor at the crest of a small mountain range, and the fortified village there takes its name from the colossal birds that roost atop the reactor. The Shinra company of course are not too happy about the condors affecting their facility, and have been sending troops to remove them for years. However, the villagers wish to protect the condors and their eggs, and have employed military tactics to defend the reactor from Shinra invasion, typically by hiring soldiers and weapons. Taking command of Fort Condor's forces is an optional minigame in Final Fantasy VII. There is only one compulsory battle, a bit like an intermission, with Polk's crash course. So how does all this connect to Yuffie? Well, in the original game, the Teenage Ninja can be recruited as a playable character by encountering and defeating her in a fight, then choosing a particular sequence of dialogue responses. These encounters can happen in any forest on the overworld map, the first of which is located, you guessed it, in the Fort Condor area. Furthermore, if Yuffie is in the player's three-man party when they initially visit Fort Condor, she will remark that she's certain there's a state-of-the-art materia inside the reactor. This is interesting because her lines of dialogue occur before the villagers themselves reveal this to be true. As we learn later in the game, the reactor is special because it has huge materia at its core, which is being sought by Scarlet. That's the same Scarlet who is the director of Shinra's advanced weaponry division, and from whose department Yuffie intends to steal the ultimate materia during intermission. The compulsory minigame in Final Fantasy VII relates to the defence of Fort Condor, against the Shinra army's attempt to obtain the huge materia. Irrespective of the battle's outcome, the Condor will disappear from the top of the reactor. However, if the player is successful in fending off Shinra's forces, they will witness the Great Bird being consumed by a magnificent sphere of fiery light, and collapsing down the mountain. As a nod to the Phoenix myth, the Condor's newly hatched chick will emerge, 
and fly off from its colourful, cracked eggshell. The Fort Condor board game itself is played by deploying military units to destroy your opponent's headquarters. The units are split into three categories, Vanguard, Ranged and Defensive. This reflects similar groupings in the original minigame, though the unit types were never identified as such. What is significantly different in the board game is that both sides are comprised of Shinra soldiers, beasts and weapons, rather than there being a distinction between opposing combatants. For example, the main enemy types in the old minigame are Wyvern, Beast, Barbarian and Commander. While the player can deploy units such as fighters, shooters, repairers or catapults. There is a very good reason for this in Intermission however, which I'll come back to at the end of the video. The design of the units themselves is one of my favourite easter eggs in the DLC, because they resemble the blocky field models for characters in the original Final Fantasy VII. As for the board on which Fort Condor is played, there are a couple of points of interest. The battlefield is clearly derived from the arid hillside environment of the old minigame, with a mass of pipes and the head of the reactor in the background. In addition to the opponent's headquarters, there are also two outposts that can be attacked. These are represented by a giant condor, whose wings wrap around its perch and the egg it's protecting, and also two condor chicks. Their designs are closely based on the condor and chicks that appear in the old game. Some players may even have spotted the colourful cracked eggshell from the huge materia mission, situated behind the opponent's headquarters. Each time Yuffie successfully wins a game of Fort Condor, she is rewarded with various items and Condor Coins. Condor Coins are used to purchase goodies from Old Snapper, who I'll speak about in a later video, and are Intermission's equivalent of Moogle Medals from Remake. The latter is likely a nod to the Kingdom Hearts series, another popular Square Enix franchise, where the player can trade the medals for money. As it happens, Yuffie was the first Final Fantasy VII character to appear in Kingdom Hearts. Just as a very obscure side note, Fort Condor is not quite the first time we have seen a board game that is itself an easter egg in the world of Final Fantasy VII. When you visit the Gold Saucer's Ghost Hotel in the original, there are two spectres in the lobby playing what seems to be chess. The bonus disc of Final Fantasy VII International, a Japanese re-release, contained 3D renders of many background objects in the game, one of which was the chessboard, showing that the pieces themselves were actually models of summon creatures such as Leviathan, Ifrit and Bahamut. Anyway, what makes Fort Condor such a genius idea in Intermission is that it not only provides a minigame to expand the player's experience, but gave developers a legitimate reason to include several characters from the main story and make them opponents. This chapter of the DLC runs concurrently with Chapter 8 of Remake, meaning we can all but verify that the character's presence here is not contradictory except for one, but I'll come back to that. There are 8 Fort Condor competitors in total, but you can only unlock games with some of them as you improve your rank. The idea is to eventually challenge the Grandmaster and win the money and materia reward they have offered. Polk of course is played in a tutorial match, but Yuffie can thereafter take on Johnny, Kirie and the Shinra middle manager at rank 1. Johnny is found in one of the lanes behind the marketplace, calling himself an idiot for spending the last of his cash on the board game. As we know from chapter 3 of the main plot, Johnny agreed to get out of town because he has a loose tongue. He wants to put his affairs in order by seeing Tifa before he leaves, which is probably what lures him to Walmart in the first place, where he next appears in chapter 9. 
trying to rescue Tifa from Don Corneal. Kyrie lingers on the pathway to Stargazer Heights and is her usual con artist self by charging a few gil for a match. For anyone who is unaware of the character's role in the compilation, she is one of the lead protagonists in the official novel The Kids Are Alright, authored by Final Fantasy VII's scenario writer Kazushige Najima. Kyrie appears in Remake as well, and while the main subplot involving her occurs in Chapter 14, she does show up as a background NPC in Chapters 2 and 3, the latter being outside Seventh Heaven. Prior to Remake's release, there was a degree of confusion among some fans regarding Kyrie's design. Her stockings closely resemble those Yuffie wears in Dirge of Cerberus, leading members of the community to believe the character was actually Yuffie in disguise. The matter seems not to have been lost on Intermission's developers, because Yuffie and Kyrie's initial exchange has them commenting on the former's outfit. What I would add though, is that the girls are not actually too dissimilar in personality. During The Kids Are Alright, Kyrie even accepts a private detective job that's key to the plot because payment is materia orbs. Jumping ahead a little bit in Intermission's story, Kyrie is still in Sector 7 when Yuffie returns here later in the chapter after Avalanche HQ's hideout has been raided by Shinra troops. This might help to explain how the con artist comes by the knowledge that Wutai and Avalanche are working together, just as she announces to the gathered crowd in Sector 5's Centre District, at the beginning of Remake's Chapter 14. The Shinra middle manager is seated at a table near the entrance to town, trying to learn the rules of Fort Condor so that he can teach his daughter. We do see his daughter in Remake, once during the opening to Chapter 3 and again near the train station towards the end of Chapter 4. I realise this is pedantic of me, but I actually find the manager's presence here a little jarring from a storytelling perspective. We last see the middle manager in Chapter 5, which, just for context, is set the previous evening. He helps the citizens on the train while Cloud, Tifa and Barrett prepare to jump off. Given his interaction with the terrorists that, supposedly, go on to blow up Mako Reactor 5, the middle manager seems remarkably calm right now. With this level of resilience, he'll be a senior manager in no time. Just as an aside, we know the manager survives the Sector 7 plate collapse in the original game because he later shows up on a business trip in Junon. Perhaps the most surprising Fort Condor opponent to appear in Intermission is Roche, the speed-obsessed soldier third class that Cloud encounters in Chapter 4 of Remake. Cloud, of course, is the friend that Roche keeps referring to, and is the reason he has shown up here at all. It's possible his inclusion in the DLC is a nod to a proposed scenario that was cut from Chapter 14, according to the Ultimanias, where Roche and Cloud were supposed to have a race through the slums. Besting the soldier at Fort Condor leads to some noteworthy dialogue. First of all, Yuffie is taken aback when Roche calls her his friend, but this ties into his characterisation from the main story, where his enemy intel says he values anyone who can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Intriguingly, Roche then remarks that they will next meet on the open road, which is almost certainly a reference to the next instalment of Remake. Co-director Motomu Toriyama has made no secret of his desire to see the self-titled Speed Demon return in future so it seems more a matter of when rather than if. It's also worth pointing out that Roche's motorcycle is a colour variant of the Shinra Guard 1000V model from G-Bike. Named after a similar arcade game at the Gold Saucer in the original Final Fantasy VII, G-Bike was a mobile game available in Japan between October 2014 
and December 2015, where Cloud raced a range of characters and monsters against a selection of landscapes. The Shinra Guard 1000V was an unlockable ride. What's interesting about this is that the G-Bike connection means every single entity in the Final Fantasy VII franchise is represented in Intermission, as I've either already referenced in my videos or will highlight in my breakdown of Chapter 2. If Yuffie approaches Jessie sitting outside Seventh Heaven, she will overhear the Avalanche member talking worriedly to herself about the events at Mako Reactor 5. A closer look will reveal Jessie is still wearing a bandage on her right leg, supporting the injury she sustained when the Whispers attacked the group at the end of Remake's Chapter 4. The Arbiters of Fate are still around it would seem, because their invisible presence blocks Yuffie from entering the bar. This prevents her crossing paths with Barrett and Tifa in the story before she is supposed to. One of the lines Yuffie will speak when she encounters the Whispers is, his ways are a mystery. As was pointed out to me by my good friend and SEAL Team 7 host Schrodinger's baby seal, this is very likely an allusion to the Chow, the principal deity of Wutai. To take on Wedge at a game of Fort Condor, Yuffie must reach rank 3. He is found outside his home, surrounded, as usual, by cats. Towards the end of Chapter 4 in Remake, Wedge introduces Cloud to three of his identically marked felines, Bigums, Reggie and Smalls. The cat on his lap during intermission is one of these, and may or may not also be the cat that leads Cloud, Barrett and Tifa down into the secret deep ground facility to rescue Wedge in Chapter 13. Deep Ground, of course, plays a role in Chapter 2 of the DLC. And finally, once Yuffie has beaten Wedge at Fort Condor, she will be able to challenge others at Rank 4. This includes the mysterious Grandmaster who, as it turns out, is none other than Chadley. Chadley is introduced in Chapter 3 of Remake as a young intern to Shinra's R&D division, but it's later revealed by overcoming all the VR combat simulations that he is in fact an android created by Professor Hojo. Chadley also appears in Sector 5's Centre District during Chapter 8, which is set at exactly the same time as this chapter in Intermission making Chadley the character whose placement here is contradictory, as I mentioned earlier. Alternatively, we could speculate that he has more than one artificial body, which might help explain why he is present in both Centre District and Wall Market during Chapter 14. As a side note, one of Chadley's functions in Remake is to synthetically create summon materia that can be acquired by the party. The same is true in the DLC, but I'll come back to that in the next video. Another of his functions is to assess Cloud's battle intel and achievements, and this is reflected in Chadley analysing the young ninja's Fort Condor match records. Beating Chadley will earn Yuffie the Grandmaster's prize of Materia and Gil, but his dialogue reveals there is more to the game's popularity than meets the eye. He advises that he has been using Fort Condor to test security measures against Wutai in espionage operations. While he doesn't explicitly state it, the implication is that he offered a reward to attract more players, hypothesising that it would eventually lure a genuine ninja to compete with him. What's interesting here is that in the main story, Chadley is pretty unambiguous about being anti-Shinra, and wishes to assist Cloud in his activities against the corporation. Applying this principle to the Fort Condor game suggests the security measures Chadley was testing, by way of constantly adapting his strategy based on the player's actions, were in fact the best way to defend the real Fort Condor reactor against invading forces. 
This finally explains why, during matches, both the player and the opponent have to use Shinra units. Well folks, this has been my recap of the easter eggs and compilation lore regarding the Fort Condor minigame. I hope you've enjoyed it, and please be sure to leave a comment with any feedback or something you think I've missed. If you haven't already done so, I invite you to check out my main Final Fantasy VII Remake video series, where I extensively break down the lore and easter eggs chapter by chapter. Those episodes are funded by Kubacon and are hosted on their YouTube channel. I'll leave a link to the full playlist in the description below. If you like these videos, remember to subscribe to both channels and turn on your notifications. And please consider picking up a copy of my book, Norse Myths That Inspired Final Fantasy VII, which is now also available as a special edition hardback. The links to each edition can be found on my Patreon account, in addition to all my other projects, and I've noted this in the description as well. But until next time, take care. I'm NJ Gallagher, and I'll speak to you again soon.